Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is introduce you to the Scalar product or some people call it the dot product as you'll see why later on. The Scalar product can be used to find the angle between two vectors. Let's say the vector A for instance and the vector B here. So what angle do A and B make with one another? It's hard to see as they're apart. But if I draw a dotted line through A and a dotted line through B, then the angle between the two vectors could either be this one here, this acute angle, or it could be this one here, the obtuse angle. Now if I translate the vector B to the start of vector A, can you see that this angle in between the vectors A and B, let's just mark it as theta, is exactly the same as this angle up here. It corresponds to it. Now when it comes to working out the angle between the two vectors A and B, as you can see there's two possible angles. There's this one that I've marked with theta and there's this angle out here. Now the scalar product or dot product always works out the angle contained between the two vectors that emerge from this point of intersection. And this is a very important point as you'll see in questions that you do. And so I've got this note here. Note that the calculated angle theta is between the two vectors that come away from the point of intersection. And so again, if I have two vectors A and B, and I extend A and extend B. Now looking towards the point of intersection here, you can see that the vector A comes away in that direction and the vector B comes away in that direction. So it's this angle in here that is calculated by the scalar product, not this one. And so if I drag the vector B to the start of vector A, then it's this angle around here, which I'll call theta, that is worked out by the scalar product. So, how do we work out theta then? Well, let's say the vectors A and B are given by A1i plus A2j, or A1a2, in column vector form, and similarly for B, B1i plus B2j, or in column vector form, B1, B2. Now it can be shown that the cosine of angle theta is equal to something called a dot b, hence the name for the scalar product or the dot product. I'll talk to you about this in a moment. And this is all divided by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. So what is a dot b? a dot b is defined as being equal to a1 times b1 plus a2 times b2 and should be familiar with the magnitude of a vector. The magnitude of a would be the root of a1 squared plus a2 squared, and similarly, the magnitude of the vector b would be the root of b1 squared plus b2 squared. Now I want to take you through an example of how we work out then the angle between two vectors, and it also demonstrates a very important point. And here it is. We've got to find the acute angle between the vectors a equaling 3i plus 2j and the vector b which equals 2i minus 4j. So the first thing we've got to do to find that angle theta is to work out a dot b. So using this result here for a dot b we've got a dotted with b is equal to 3 times the 2, so we've got 3 times 2, and then to that we add 2 times minus 4. So we've got 2 times minus 4. And that gives us 6 minus 8, which is going to be minus 2. I need to work out the magnitude of the two vectors, so the magnitude of the vector a is going to be equal to the square root then of 3 squared plus 2 squared. And if we work that out, we've got the root of 13. Got to do much the same for 
the magnitude of the vector b now. So the magnitude of the vector b is going to be equal to the root of, we've got 2 squared plus 4 squared. So 2 squared plus 4 squared, and that's going to be equal to the square root of 20. And now I can use the formula for cosine theta. So we therefore have cosine of angle theta equals a dot b, which we've seen is minus 2, and that's divided then by the magnitude of the vector a, which is root of 13, and that is multiplied by the magnitude of vector b, which is the root of 20. And if you work this value out on your calculator, you'll find you get minus 0 0.1240 and so on. And so to work out angle theta, if we want it in degrees, just take the inverse cosine of minus 0 0.1240, make sure your calculator is in degrees mode, and you should find you end up with 97.125 and so on degrees. Now the question said, calculate the acute angle and clearly we've got an obtuse angle, an angle over 90 degrees. So it looks like we're looking at something like this diagram here where the angle theta here is obtuse. We want this angle out here, the acute angle. So to get that acute angle I just need to take the angle of 97 degrees away from 180 degrees. So just put an intro here that the acute angle is equal to 180 degrees minus the 97 then 0.125 and so on degrees. Working that out you end up with 82.87 and so on degrees and if we give this to say two significant figures, then this is going to be 83 degrees to two significant figures there. Now I didn't draw this out to scale, but if you had have done, then you would have got a diagram looking something like this. You can see the vector A is 3 across, 2 up, 3i plus 2j, and the vector B is 2 across and 4 down. 2i minus 4j. And so the calculation then worked out this angle in here. This was the angle theta, which is obtuse. And if I extend that line out there, then the angle in here was the one that was 83 degrees to two significant figures, the acute angle. So I hope that's given you an idea then on how to use the scalar product. Now in my next video, what I want to do is take this a little bit further and show you how we use the scalar product to work out the interior angle of a triangle when you're given the coordinates of the three vertices. And it is an important example purely because there's a very common mistake that is often made. And I can show you what that mistake is and hopefully you'll be able to avoid it.